This is JoeyBuddy96 and I'm going to show you how to create a composite texture for a 3D model in Maya. We're going to be using GIMP. I recommend using Photoshop because when you're using the heel tool it's a lot less laggy if you have a high resolution photo. We'll start by taking a high resolution photo. This one is a bad example of it because it is fairly low resolution, which means that it's going to be blurry when you create your final model. Um, I recommend starting with a high resolution photo, scaling it down to be a low resolution, putting that on the 3D model, um, adjusting your UVs, and then taking the high resolution photo and importing it into Maya. Um, if your computer is fast enough, or if you have a, a Tesla video card or an NVIDIA card that's made for Maya, then you can go ahead and jump straight to using a high resolution photo. This one was made with a single frontal picture and a single profile picture that was then flipped. Um, it's better if you use uh, a single frontal picture and then one for each side of the head, um, because that will give you that natural symmetry. So let's start in on our um, thing that we've got here. Let's just delete this one because we won't be needing it. Well, actually, let's just move this one up and hide the other two. We want to fill the surrounding area with hair and with skin. We'll hit Control and then click the spot where we want to clone from release it, and L and B hold to paint the surrounding area. You want to have a larger brush for this side, for this part, and we're just going to completely fill up the white space, because this is going to wrap around the entire head, and that would mean that you'd be wrapping the white space around the head too. Continually move your sample spot so you don't get a repeatable or a repeated texture pattern. And watch where it's moving because it can take texture from places that you don't necessarily want it to take it from. We'll do this with the other side. And if you don't screw up too bad, this part won't go very slowly at all. We'll want to do the same thing with the skin, and always keep your 3D model in mind. Our 3D model has a longer neck than it shows here in this uh, photo that's used and even in the final one that was shown. So we want to have a lot more skin in the lower part of this picture. I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. And as you can tell, it's very laggy when it comes to plopping down a point and when you can click it. It has no video acceleration. So let's show you how to make this thing seamless. Layer, transform, offset, we'll just say 200 pixels for the width. Make sure it's wrap around, click offset, and now we can make it so there's no seam at the back of the head.
We'll then move to our healing brush and we can make it so there are no seams in between our clone spots. This is the part that will take the longest and if you're using a high resolution photo and a larger brush it'll take a very long time because GIMP is very laggy when it comes to that kind of thing. When we're done we can safely move back to the original format of the picture. So we'll go to layer, transform offset, and then just put it back however many we moved it from. So I'll just put it negative two. Um, then when we're done with that, we can go ahead and save it as a JPEG. And we want to do that at a higher resolution. And we want to make sure that the canvas is the same size as our um, image that we've got there. Export quality, make sure it's very high, 100%. Advanced options, best quality, floating point is the best one. Uh, progressive, optimize, and use quality settings from the original image. Well, actually you don't have to do that. Um, I'm not going to save this one because I haven't converted the canvas to the layers. Um, in order to do that we'd have to delete both of these. Get canvas to layers. And then we'd save it. So that's the first part. Um, I'm going to stick around and heal this one up. In the original uh, photo they had put skin over the eyes. Personally I would leave them in there because when you're fitting the UVs to the eyes it's a whole lot easier to uh, fit them around that edge and it's easier to fit that to the edge if you can actually see where the original skin starts and stops if you've got the whites and the blue there. So I'll see you in the next video.